So what makes the soda geyser erupt? It's actually little tiny imperfections that are on the surface of these Mentos. Think of it like uh, craters on the moon. They're called nucleation points. You can't feel them with your tongue, but they're the perfect place for a carbon dioxide molecule to adhere to and then release the gas. It happens very, very quickly. The little tiny bubbles are actually adhering to the little nooks and crannies that are there, and that causes the gas to be released. And when the gas is released, and these are sitting on the very bottom of the bottle, well then that pushes all of the soda up. Something like this. Perfect! But what if you don't have Mentos? Here are three things that I want you to try. This is sand, it's actually coral sand. It's very, very fine. Then there's regular table salt over here, and finally there's rock salt. Now I've put them in these tubes that are weighted on the bottom because the trick is to get it to the bottom before it erupts, right? So this is gonna go to the bottom, the tube is gonna break open, and we're gonna see how well the coral sand works. Watch. Not bad, kind of a cool geyser. See how it kind of stayed together, mushroomed at the very top and worked its way back down again. Not a bad alternative. All right, this is just plain old table salt. Watch this. Isn't that funny? Not nearly as good as you would think, but we still have this reaction that's going on here and it's still bubbling, but it didn't happen all at one time. So when that depth charge busted open, we still get this great reaction but it didn't give us a high geyser. Let's try the rock salt. Again, another good geyser, but not nearly as high as we got with the Mentos. What did it teach us? Stick with the Mentos.